So after the all-around failure of the 2016 Powerpuff Girls reboot, they're making another reboot. This time for the channel CW, known for teen dramas and superhero shows like The Flash or Supergirl. They're making a live-action series, Powerpuff Girls. Yes, for Rizzles. <laughs> Yes! In an article for, for Variety, it reads... In the updated version of the series, the titular superheroes are now disillusioned 20-somethings who resent having lost their childhood to crime fighting. Will they agree to reunite now that the world needs them more than ever? The project hails from writers and executive producers Heather Rainier and Diablo Cody, Greg Berlanti, Sarah Shashanster, and David Madden, who will be executive producers via Berlanti Productions. Warner Brothers Television will produce. Which, okay, you know what? I actually kind of want this. My main issue with the 2016 Powerpuff Girls reboot was that it tried just so hard to be the old show, but it wasn't like the old show enough, and it wasn't its own thing. It had no identity of its own, and it did a poor job introducing a new generation of kids to these characters and concepts. It was just too safe and boring. This CW series they announce is so different from the source that it's the opposite of the Powerpuff Girls 2016. This is what I wanted. Um, maybe not live action, but... You know, this is a step in the right direction. Kind maybe. The plot of them being adults who grew up hating crime fighting sounds like the edgy Power Rangers fan film, but a lot of people are also saying Umbrella Academy, which I never watched, but I plan on to eventually, so yeah. Kinda also seems like the mad skit to Broke Powerpuff Girls or the ADHD parody HBO's Powerpuff Girls. No longer just content to fight crimes. Watch them look at their body fat, exercise, and then binge eat. Watch them form relationships that last for weeks at best. HBO's Powerpuff Girls! Like CW has Riverdale and they have like Supergirl. So I guess it's gonna be like a combination of the two things. I mean, Diablo Cody is known for uh, Juno and Jennifer's body. She's writing the script along with Heather Rainier who produced Veronica Mars. I like Diablo Cody. I'm just looking at my Twitter feed. Everyone's mad, but I'm like, fuck it, do it. If you're gonna make a live action adaptation, I'd rather it be different than just a shot for shot retelling. This reminds me about how uh, a couple weeks ago, like um, the, the whole announcement for the Netflix Avatar Last Airbender series, Supposedly, this turned out not to be true, but supposedly, <laughs> uh, the reason why the creators left the live-action Netflix series was because Netflix wanted to make, essentially, each of the characters, make it like bloodier, more sex, basically Riverdale or Games of, Game of Thrones with Avatar. Turned out to not, not to be true, and this seems like that's what, what this is gonna be, maybe? I doubt it'll be as vulgar, but with Diablo Cody's sense of humor, I don't know what to expect, but I'm kinda interested in whatever's about to happen. Maybe it'll be good, or at least so bad that it's enjoyable as in a disaster. What I want to know is, how will these villains transfer to live action? Mojo Jojo was inspired by Dr. Gori from a Japanese show called Spectre Man. He could just be a man in, ob in an obvious suit. I feel a lot of characters like Fuzzy Lumpkins could pass that off. I mean, hey, I doubt it, but what if they keep the giant monsters with Godzilla costumes destroying the city? You know, like the Apples and Stereo music video. I doubt CW would do that. That's just wishful thinking. Really, as a TV show, they'll likely just sparingly have some CG monsters once every few episodes. While they mope around the past and do whatever Riverdale does. Buttercup will probably date Mitch or the kid who eats paste or something or the rowdy rough boys. Him will probably be like a, a drag queen. The Amoeba boys will be a bad CG effect. But they, they wouldn't even have faces, they'd just be our, like a realistic germ monster, some slime creature, like the blob, maybe. Princess will probably be like a, a, a douchebag YouTuber, Jake Paul will probably show up, be, be, be her boyfriend or something. There's an episode where Princess gets cancelled, Princess gets caught put, putting on blackface. I don't know, no, no, hang on. If, if it's the Powerpuff Girl, she puts on green face and Mojo Jojo's like, what the heck, girl? That's not cool. I don't know, Berlanti Productions is the studio doing this who does Arrow and The Flash and Supergirl, which seems appropriate, and also Titans. I'm curious how the tone is gonna be. 
I don't know what you all think. The original Powerpuff Girls ended because the creator, Craig McCracken, was, was just done with it. Six seasons in a movie, that was enough for him, and he moved on. I recall some audio interview of him stating if there was more Powerpuff Girls media, he'd want it to be a new interpretation, and I guess that's what the CW thing is, unlike the 2016 reboot. People are asking, like, why isn't the creator, Craig McCracken, involved? It's like, no, he's done. It's over. He moved on with his life. He has other cartoons he wants to work on, other shows. You know, watch Wander or whatever he's doing for Disney. Reminds me how there were rumors of former vice president of Adult Swim, Mike Laszlo, wanting the same old show but with more violence like Samurai Jack, but that's not happening for now. I kind of picture just like a live action Powerpuff Girls basically being just hit girl from Kick-Ass and just duplicate her three times. <laughs> Again, that old show is done. Superhero media can be reinterpreted in many ways. Do something crazy and maybe it'll work. But what are y'all expecting from this? Are y'all excited for a train wreck or hoping the train remains on the rails? <laughs> Did I use that sentence already in this video? Tell me more in the comments. This is just a filler video. That's why it's so poor quality. Bye.